All right, you may begin. Stephen King is one of the world's greatest writers of horror fiction. I guess it is a well-known fact that he was addicted to alcohol and drugs at the time he wrote Kudra in the early 80s. But did you know that he doesn't even remember writing the book? It tells the story of a rabid Saint Bernard who destroys everything in its path. Without even realizing though, Stephen King wrote about his own addiction and feelings. Addiction is represented by rabies, and due to this illness, Kudra becomes a monster. I'm going to tell you the story about how the dog got rabies. Kudru was an old, not even for a dog, but at five he was well past his puppyhood. It was the 16th of June, a beautiful early morning, the warmest early June in years, and by two this afternoon Kudru would be lying in the dusty dooryard, or in the barn if the man would let him in, which he sometimes did when he was drinking, which was most of the time these days, but that was later. There was a rabbit, which was large, brown, and didn't have the slightest idea Kudru was there. Kudru worked toward it. Out, of, out for sport rather than meat. He actually got to within 15 yards of it when the rabbit's head and ears came up. For a moment, the rabbit did not move at all. It was a frozen sculpture, but then it was off. Barking furiously, Kudru gave chase. The rabbit was very small and Kudru was very big, but the possibility of the thing put an extra ration of energy in Kudru's legs. He actually got close enough to pull the rabbit. It zigged. Kudru came around more ponderously, his back legs digging black metal dirt, losing some ground at first, making it up quickly. The rabbit zigged, then made straight across the north field. Kudru pelted it after it, already suspecting this was one race he wasn't going to win, but he tried hard. And he was actually gaining on the rabbit again when it dropped into a small hole on the side of a small and easy hill. The hole was about 20 feet at its deepest. Its limestone surface made a good slide but a bad climb, and its bottom was littered with bones. A woodchuck, a skunk, a couple of chipmunks, a couple of squirrels, and a house cat. The house cat name had been Mr. Clean. The campers assumed they had lost him two years before and thought he had been hit by a car or just run out, but there he was, along with the bones of a good sized field mouse he had chased inside. Kudru's rabbit had rolled and slid all the way to the bottom, as Kudru's furious, <laughs> furious barking filled the place. The echoes made it sound as though there was a whole pack of dogs there. The small cave had also attracted bats from time to time. This year, the bats inhabiting the cave were crawling with a particularly violent strain of rabies. Kudru had stuck at the shoulders. He dug furiously with his back legs to no effect at all. He could have <laughs> put himself back out, but for now, he still wanted the rabbit. His barking roused the bats. They were terrified. Something had invaded their, their, had invaded their home. They flew in mass toward the exit, toward the exit squeaking, but their sonar recording the puzzling and distressing fact. The entrance was no longer there. They wheeled and swooped in the darkness. Their membranous swings sounding like small pieces of clothing, diaper perhaps, flapping in the line of a gusty wind. Below them, the rabbit cringed and hoped for the best. Kudru felt several of the bats flutter against the third of him that had managed to get into the hole. And he became frightened. He didn't like their scent or their sound. He didn't like the odd heat that seemed to emanate from them. He barked louder and snapped at the things that were wheeling and squeaking around his head his snapping jaws closing on one brown black wing, bones thinner than those in a baby's hand crunched. A moment later, the bat slashed and bit at him, slicing open the dog's sensitive muzzle. A moment later, it went skittering and cartwheeling down the slope, already dying. But the damage had been done. A bite from a rabid animal is most serious around the head. Dogs cannot even hope for complete protection from the, from the inactivated virus vaccine, which every vet administers. And Kudru had never had a single rabies shot in his life. Not knowing this, but knowing that the unseen thing had tasted foul and horrible, Kudru decided the game was not worth the candle. He pulled himself back out, causing a little avalanche of dirt. He shook himself and more dirt flew from his pelt. Blood dripped from his muzzle. He shook, uh, then he trod it away. He shook himself again. His muzzle hurt, hurt it, but oh, sorry. But the blood was already drying, clotting through. But it hurt. 
Dogs have a sense of self-consciousness that is far out of proportion to their intelligence, and Kujo was disgusted with himself. He didn't want to go home. If he went home, one of his trinity, the man, the woman, or the boy, would know that he had done something to himself. It was possible that one of them might, hold, might call him a bad dog, and at this particular moment, could really reconsider himself to, himself to be a bad dog. So instead of going home, he went to the stream that separated Camber's land from the property of their nearest neighbor. He waded upstream, he drank deeply, he rolled over in the water, trying to get rid of the watery green, <laughs> green taste of limestone trying to get rid of that bad dog feeling. Little by little, he began to feel better. The bad dog feeling was fading and his nose hardly hurt at all now. Could you breast it his way easily through the, the, through the high grass of the north field? Chasing an occasional bird, but not bothering to give chase. He had had his chase of the day and his body remembered it, even if his brain didn't. He was a Saint Bernard in his prime, five years old, nearly 200 pounds in weight. And now, the morning of June 16th, 1980, he was pre-rabbit. Thank you. <laughs>